Can we get a new chair? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Tie-Dye Show. We are so glad to have you here today. Now, we have some great guests lined up for you. And today, our first guest, back by popular demand, ladies and gentlemen, Nana. So Nana, thank you for coming back and joining us. Um, a couple of questions we have for you. So how many days of quarantine have you had? Oh, I don't know, too many. Too many? <laughs> too many. And uh, what have you been doing during this time? Taking care of the dogs. Taking care of the dogs. Now, how many dogs do you have? Three. Three, and what are their names? I have Little Bear, uh, Sugar, and Puppy. Little Bear, Sugar, and Puppy, mm -hmm. and... Lovely dogs. They no. keep me busy. Take my time. Now, which dog is your favorite? Mine. <laughs> Little Bear. Little Bear. Little Bear. So, what have you been watching on TV to pass the time? I've been watching a lot of the news, mm -hmm. and uh, then the, after that, it was the programs that have come up where people are, are um, trying out for for the shows. So like mm -hmm. The Voice? And... Like The Voice and things like that. Okay. And what's your favorite show to eat to? Like what's your favorite show to watch while you're eating? I don't take that long. I don't know. <laughs> I carry it around with me. <laughs> I'm sorry. And are you ready for this quarantine to be over? I really am. What's your first plans when this is over? Go shopping. Go shopping? <laughs> well, Mood. And we will be back after a word from our sponsors. Well, right now, a lot of students are having time to work on their eSports skills. Right now, we're going to head on over to our walleye eSports correspondent, Connor the Gully, walleye seagull, who's going to tell us about how competitive Fortnite is going for him. How's it going, Connor? They're amazing. Like, they don't miss. Why can't they miss? Why can't they miss? Fortnite, stupid. I hate it. Well, that is absolutely fantastic. We're going to meet up with him next week to talk about competitive Rocket League. So hey guys, we uh, are joined with Mike Moore here with us today, and we're just going to be talking about change. And and uh, Michael, I, I wanted to just talk to you a little bit about kind of what kind of change this has brought in your life. And so so um, how do you see what what all is going on with the change that's happened and the things that it's changed in your because you're a senior this year, right? So well, um, it it's kind of this, this whole thing. It's Kind of made the world stop spinning, you know, a little bit. Seems like anyway, you know, everybody's out of work and out of school. And for me, it's um, it, it right now. It's just time out of school, you know. I, I always enjoy that, but um, it's it's one of those things where I think I'll be more sad about it later. Mm -hmm. right now, getting cut off from my senior year. Now. Yeah, because I, I know you were supposed to go on a like a band trip, and mm -hmm. and uh, then graduation may have to be later in the summer and yeah, different it's, things. It's been moved to July. It has been moved to July. Good. Well, at least you know when it's going to come. And so there's a lot of change going on. And, and you know, all of us are dealing with change. And so uh, how do you think this has impacted your generation? What do you think? <clears throat> well, it's going to be a story, a good story that we're going to be able to tell about. Okay. Sure. Go. I lived when yeah. the pandemic hit, right? Yeah. Okay. 
But what, what do you see? How, how do you see this moving forward? Like we were, we were, you know, uh, what, what do you think it's going to do in this? And how's it changing our world? Uh, really, I, I couldn't tell you the changes that will be after all of this is over. Yeah. I couldn't even guess, but I, everybody can say for sure that it will be, uh, a different changes, world. Yeah. yeah. A different world. Yeah. Well, um, how has it affected you in like your, your own personal walk with God? Uh, what, what, what has it caused you to do anything differently? Uh, well, uh, over the past few days, I have, um, felt the need to pray more. And I, I went through a spell a few days ago where I was praying a whole lot, actually, you know, uh -huh. a lot more than, um, I ever had in my entire life. And I was reading the word more and, you know, that kind of stuff. That's, that's, okay. uh, I felt the need to go through that. Well, out of that, it, are there some things that maybe the Lord began to speak to you about or begin to show you uh, in your study of the word and in prayer? What what, what really came, kind of came to the surface? Well, this whole thing, this whole thing, it actually reminds me of a story in the Bible. Um, okay. The story about, you know, where Jesus was on the boat with the disciples. Right. Okay. And, um, you know, they were on the boat and the big tempest came up. You know? Okay. Storm and rain and all that. Right. And apparently it was pretty bad because they went down to Jesus who was sleeping underneath the deck. Okay. And they woke him up. And this is, of course, not a direct quote, but pretty much what they were saying was, we're dying and you need to help us. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So Jesus, he got up and... I can only imagine he was a little aggravated that they woke him up. Like he was <laughs> yeah, like I'm trying to ki catch a nap, guys. And, yeah. and some of these guys were fishermen. I mean, they knew they knew the lake and everything because it was a big lake, obviously, and yeah. major. And so, yeah. Uh, and Jesus, you know, he got up and he asked them, "Why are you afraid?" And yeah. of course, he got up and he he stopped the storm. You know, he told it to stop and it obeyed him. Um, and that's, that's really what this whole thing reminds me of because, you know, the disciples on the boat, they saw this big thing coming up and they went nuts. They were all afraid and everything. And that's how people are acting over this whole thing today. Yeah. So that's, yeah. that's how that reminds me of that. A, a lot of people are afraid. A lot of people are scared. They're scared of change. They're scared of what might happen. They're scared of all these unknowns. And, and Peter, uh, I mean, uh, Jesus really asked uh, an important question. Why are you afraid? And, you know, uh, we have to ask ourselves that question. Why are we afraid? Uh, because his whole thing, and I, I, at least from what I've studied, this whole thing of when he said, let's get in the boat and go to the other side, God, he had already promised, Jesus already promised, we'll make it to the other side. But they got focused on the situation they were in. Right. Yeah. And, you know, we can all get focused on that. And when we we get focused on that, that's when we can get afraid. And uh, why why do you think people are afraid today? Well, um, it the whole coronavirus thing, it was really just kind of blown out of the water, made it to be a lot worse than it is. Yeah. Uh, well, and it is scary. Listen, there are people scary. dying. There's, yes. there's lots of people dying. And guys, we're not making light of that. But, but... Fear, we don't have to live in fear, do we? No, we do not. You know, and Jesus was going, why are you afraid? Because here, here's the thing. Just because these things are coming down the pipe, we don't have to be afraid because of who is with us. Right. And Jesus like, why are you afraid? I'm here, okay? Do you think I'm not going to finish what God's planning for me to do? But, but, but sometimes we can lose we can lose track of that and, mm -hmm. and forget that God is with us, right? Right, yeah. Um, what's one, is there any verse or any uh, anything that, that God's kind of dropped in your heart through all of this that you just feel like, you know, he, he's saying, man, you don't have to worry about this. I got this. Is, right. is there anything that? Well, no, just, just that story. That's, just that story. That's all. Well, and that story says a lot because... Mm -hmm. When he when he silenced the the tempest, when he uh, causes the winds and the waves to to die down, you know, really the disciples looked at him after that and go, "Who is this person that even the winds and the waves obey him?" Mm -hmm. And and I think it blew their mind because uh, that's how great our God is. 
And and so when you're dealing with change, and Michael, you're going through a lot of change, and I, I understand that it can be hard sometimes, can it? Yeah, sometimes, yeah. But, but um, as you're doing that, if you truly remember who's with you, that God is with you, that he cares about you, and that he's taking care of you, you don't have to be afraid. And right. so, so guys, even though today we're talking about change, you know, we don't have to be afraid of the, the circumstances. We don't have to be afraid. Now, I think we still got to be use wisdom. Mm-hmm. You know, we're, right. I, I didn't measure it, but I think we're about five and a half, six feet apart. Right. So we're, we're being wise okay. and, 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 you know, we're taking all the precautions we can, but <clears throat> we need to know, remember this truth. And, and, and Michael, thank you for bringing it out that God's with us. You know, that's the thing that we need to remember, even, right. even though we can get to the point and go, don't you care we're dying? Mm-hmm. Well, God does care. He cares about every family that's lost somebody. He cares about the people who are hurting in the midst of this. And he cares about you right where you're at. So don't be afraid of the change because God is going to take us through. We don't have to be afraid. But we can trust him. And I, I read this this morning. I was looking through Facebook. Uh, somebody said, how do we move forward? How do we move forward through all of this? And and the person put, just put your hands in the hands of Jesus and let him lead you to your future. That's good. Yeah, because if we will walk with him, he will lead us right where we need to be. Well, Michael, thank you so much for coming in and sharing your heart. And I appreciate you talking about the change that you're going through in life. And I know that that God's going to redeem every one of those things. And even though some of the things have changed, God will bless it back to you because he'll cause all those things to work for our good. That's one of the things we can always lean in, that God's promises and God's goodness and his faithfulness is always there. And we can trust in that. All right. Well, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, guys. So, hey, guys, I want to talk to you tonight for just a little bit about change. You know, they did a survey um, with people who lived 100 years or more and some common traits in their longevity. In other words, their length of living were discovered. And it was these three things. Number one, they had purpose. Number two, they had a positive outlook or faith in their life. And number three, they had the ability to handle change. You know, uh, we often hear, maybe you've heard this before, maybe you haven't, but um, there's this saying, the only thing that's constant is change. Guys, change is a, a, a reality of life, and there's a lot of change going on right now with what we're going through. Maybe you're struggling. Maybe you're like, I don't understand this. Why My school's messed up. Maybe some of you are going, thank you, Jesus. School is different. You know what? There's the ability, we have the ability to make a difference in, in, in our community, in our life, if we uh, adapt to the change that's taking place, or we can get stuck. You know, there's a cycle of life, you know, the circle of life in Simba, Sabanya. you know, <laughs> there is a circle of life. And listen, Joshua 23, 14 says, Now I am about to go the way of all the earth. He's talking about, I'm about to die. But he said, but you know with all your heart and soul that not one of the good promises that the Lord your God gave you has failed. Every promise has been fulfilled. Not one has failed. So as we think about this, that even though you're going through things, here's what you need to lean into. That, you know, there's no doubt that we're going to have change in our life. If we live long enough, eventually we may we're we may die. We may get old enough that you die. And some of you are very young, and so you you know that means you'll outlive me a long time. But the one thing that even though the world changes, our family changes, our church changes, our lives change, there's there's one thing you need to lean into that we need the real, to accept the reality and focus on the positives of each of those changes. Because right now you could be going, I hate this change. I hate social distancing. I hate this. But we're doing this for a purpose. There's a purpose to keep us safe, 
to, to keep us well. Now, we don't need to get in fear, and, and we need to, to lean into the person who is with us through all this change, and that's God. He's with us every step of the way. But, but guys, when we realize that change is some of the things that we're going to be dealing with, you're always going to be dealing with change, then what you need to do is press into this. And this is from Philippians 3.13, and Paul says, Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. In other words, I ain't grasp everything that God's got for me. But this one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. In other words, he's saying, look, you can't live in the past. The world has changed. When we come out of this, we're never going to be the same again. And for some of you going, no, I like that. Oh, please. No, it's changed. But think of the positives. There's going to be great things that come about. There are going to be some sad things. Some of you have missed things this year. Some of you have missed parts of your school year. Some of you have gone through things where you've lost the ability to do things. I, I mean, I think of uh, of uh, Sam, and, and he didn't get to do his final performance at Wallace. And, and I think of, of all these, these students that they were in their last year of high school and, and they're they're going through that and they're missing out on spring sports, baseball and track and all of those things. They're missing out on prom. They're missing out, you know, graduations being bumped way back. And, and so there's a lot of change going on. But in the midst of this, the if we will look for the positive in it, God can use that to get us focused on what we can do. Now, Change is necessary. We need to break new ground for God. In fact, the, the, the church in the New Testament, right after Jesus had been resurrected and then ascended, the day of Pentecost, you know, the church is born and 3,000 people are saved. And then a, a, a few days later, a few weeks later, another 5,000. And the church grew like it's, it's growing huge. But you know what all those people did? They stayed right there in Jerusalem. And yet Jesus had told them, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Well, they had stayed around there. And so then some change came. See, persecution came, problems came. And because of that, then all of a sudden, those people that were right there in Jerusalem that had stayed right there had to go all over the world. Now, at first, I'm sure they thought, this is horrible. People were being arrested and put in jail. You may be thinking, this pandemic, oh my gosh, people are dying. They are. But you know what? In the midst of this, and we need to pray for those who are, who are losing their lives. We need to pray for God to stop this pandemic. We need to pray for healing for those that are sick. We need to pray for the ministry of this. But you know what? We also need to pray, God, what do you want me to do in this situation? Now that everything's changed, what do you want me to do? You see, when we're breaking new ground, it's difficult. And it was difficult in that time for Jewish believers to even believe that Gentiles could be saved. And yet, God was doing this. You may have heard somebody say, well, we've never done it that way before. Maybe you even go, you may, even though you're young, may go, but I liked it this way. I want to do it this way. Well, those days may be gone. And if they are gone, then what God's got for us is going to even be better. You see, guys, Change is something that if we want to, to take the positive side of it, we've got to get ourselves out of this unwillingness to take risk and do things differently. Because if we will take risk and do things differently and take a step of faith, God will meet us and we can have a positive outlook from change. Now, change got to be figured out. We got to figure out where we're going. What are we supposed to do? So during this time, I want you to understand that you need to be asking, God, how do you want me to live my life moving forward? Now, maybe you're saying, man, vacation. Yeah, but after a while, you're going to go, this social distancing sucks, right? Because it's no fun. But you know what? How can you connect with friends now? through the internet, through your Facebook, through Twitter, through Instagram, however, how can you uh, connect with them? But also, how can you make a difference in their lives? What if this is the way we are for the next several months? How are we going to, uh, uh, you know, 
attach ourselves to this? How are we going to move forward? How are we going to uh, accept what's going on and yet at the same time make a difference? Well, we do that by realizing that we're supposed to fulfill our mission more than we are supposed to hang on to the way the, that things used to be. You know what, guys? The church has got stuck like that before. They got so focused on uh, how they did it that they missed out on the purpose that God had for them. I want you to realize you're the church. You go, I'm just a teenager. No, you're not just a teenager. You are the church of today. You're the leaders of tomorrow. And if we're going to live that out, guys, you're going to have to take the step of faith and saying, okay, God, in this new world that we live in, that's been affected by this pandemic, what are we going to do? How are we going to move forward? Well, we never lose sight of what the goal is. And the goal is, is to reach people for Jesus. Because if there's, there's one thing that we can do, we take others with us to heaven. That's the only thing we're going to take with us. So we keep our focus. But how do we deal with this change? Well, the way we deal with this change is knowing who is with us all the way through it. And who is with us is God. And God never changes. You know the reason why God never changes? Because he got it right to begin with. He knows everything that's coming. He knows everything the way it already is. And he's already there. So he doesn't have to change. But let me just give you a couple of scriptures. It, Malachi 3.6 says, I am the Lord, I, I the Lord do not change. So you, the descendants of Jacob, are not destroyed. In other words, he said, because I'm faithful, because I'm, I'm true to everything I say, and that's what we read earlier, that Joshua said, look, you know what? I'm about to, I'm about to roll off this earth. I'm about, to, I'm about to be done with my life. But one thing you've seen is God has been faithful to his promise. And because God is unchangeable, we can, we can take change and we can run with it. It also says in Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The principles of God's word don't change. The truth doesn't change. The message doesn't change. But the way we do life, it's going to change. So I want to ask you, I want, I want you to ask you this. What do you need to trust in God? What do you need to do? Where do you need to trust God in this? Because you need to understand God is faithful. God said he will always be there. He's true to his word. His love endures forever. He says, I'm, I've got a plan for you. If you trust in God's faithfulness, that he's going to bring all these promises, and he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus is. He's going to, if he said it was good then, he said it was good now, it'll be good in the future. You can trust him on that. But Here's what I want you to do. In the comments, I want you to go, where do I need, and here's the question, where do I need to, to trust God in the, all the changes taking place? Maybe for some of you, it's, it's trusting God with friendships. Maybe it's trusting God with, with how everything's going to work out. Maybe it's the unknown. I don't know where you need to trust God, but put that in the comments because I want to be praying with you. I want to be praying with you through this change. I want you to know that, that one day you're going to be able to give a testimony of this. Hey, I was back there when that happened, and here's what God did in the midst of that. Because, guys, this is not just an extended vacation time. This is a time where the world is looking for answers. And you know who they're looking to? They're looking to people who have the answers. And you and I are those people. We are Christians. We don't have to be afraid. We don't have to be worried. But we can take this change that's coming down the pike and go, okay, change is coming. It's the one thing that's always constant. But Lord, you're never changing. And I'm going to have a testimony. I'm going to have, I'm going to be able to testify of what you did in my life and how I helped other people go through this. So guys, there's going to be times where you're going to, go, man, there's no way I can keep going. There's no way I can do this. There's no way. But we got to ask ourselves, how are we going to handle this change? Well, here's what, here's what we do. We lean into the faithfulness of God. Don't be anxious for anything, but with prayer and supplication, make your request known unto the Lord and the God of peace will give you a peace that passes all understanding. You see, guys, when we trust God, 
Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. You need to know how to go into the future. Trust God with it. Acknowledge him in every step of the way. And what are we afraid of? Oh, that's another thing I want you to post. Here's question number two, and I want you to post me an answer. What are you afraid of about your future? What is the scary thing about your future? Okay, put that down in the comments because I want to be praying for you because I want you to know this, that in his love that endures forever. There's one of the Psalms that every every time they would say something, then they'd go, and, it, and his love endures forever, and his love endures forever, and his love endures forever, and his love endures forever. Why is that so important? Because he wanted to drive home the point. His love endures through all time, it's always the same. And the Bible says that his perfect love will cast out all fear. So number one, what are you struggling with to trust God in all of this change? And number two question, what are you afraid of? Guys, there's going to be times that we're afraid. And we can get afraid for a little bit, but we don't want fear to stay there. We just need to hold God's hand and let him guide us through this change. I want to pray with you now because look, change is part of life. It's part of the circle of life. There's going to be change. We're facing change. And even over the next few months, there might be more and more and more change that we see. But you don't have to worry about it, guys, because this is where we can trust. We can trust that God knew what was coming. God knew before it even happened. And because he knows, and he is all powerful, all knowing, and all pre always presence, present with us that we can trust in his faithfulness and his love. His faithfulness is everlasting. His love comes, does not come to an end and it cast out that fear. So I want to pray with you. Father, right now, I pray for everyone uh, that's watching this. Lord, I pray that you would help us walk through this change. We're needing to walk through this change with you, holding our hands and guiding us because we can't see the future, but you can. And because we know that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever, we know that you're going to always be with us. You'll never leave us or forsake us. And we know that your plan is for us to give us good and not bad, to give us a hope and a future, to not harm us, but to take us through. You're going to give us strength. You're going to give us peace. We're going to trust in that. In Jesus' name, I pray for everyone. Amen. Guys, I hope this has been an encouraging word. And here's what I want you to do. Just take hold of that change and see how God wants to take you forward and how he wants you to move forward in that change so you can be uh, a change agent for your world. Guys, we can make a difference if we take the change. Well, of course, we couldn't have him last week after that great fall he had, but here he is back again this week, ladies and gentlemen, the Easter Bunny. So you're a bunny. Do you have any eggs for us today? Oh, oh, that's very nice. No, 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 